Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a video to talk to you guys about non-surgical skin tightening or machines that tighten the skin. I've had lots of questions on the channel about lots of devices that are out there on the market. They all claim to do the same thing, which is to give you a facelift without using surgery. Technologies that are marketed in this way, the ones that you will have heard of most topically recently might be Morpheus 8. That's quite a big one right now. Things like Althera, Haifu, Thermage even was another one, lots of different technologies that all essentially claim to do the same thing, which is to tighten the skin. First of all, I want to give you a little bit of a background as to how these machines actually work. They all essentially work from the same underlying principle, that is, they are trying to get energy under the skin. When you get the energy under the skin, it generates heat. When you generate heat, you generate tissue damage, essentially you are burning the tissues below the surface of the skin and when you create that injury to the deeper layers of the skin, you then stimulate a healing process and healing process results in the production of new collagen tissue which should tighten the skin. Now we see new collagen tissue and the manufacturers of these devices love talking about new collagen tissue but essentially what it is is scar tissue that's being produced in there. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, scar tissue is, it's, it's rich in collagen, it's very dense, it's very tight, it's very fibrous, it's, it's a good thing to have under there but it's often marketed as neocollagenesis or new collagen formation but essentially we are burning the insides of the skin producing an injury producing a healing response producing collagen or scar tissue and that is what is causing the, the tissues to tighten the first device that tried to do this was a thing called thermage now some of you may remember thermage it was a big 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 thing when it first came out and the way that Thermage work was using radio frequency energy. So you have a, a beam, you place it on the skin of the face or neck, and you deliver this radio frequency energy through the skin to heat up the, the tissues underneath the skin. And Thermage was hugely popular at the time when it launched in the sort of early noughties. And the reason it was so popular was it was the first time anyone had really embraced the concept of trying to non-surgically create a facelift. Criticisms of Thermage were that it was bloody painful and not that effective. So since then, the Thermage company have produced a variety of different generations of instruments that they have improved um, efficacy with. A whole range of other manufacturers of trying to get in on the action by creating a number of competitor devices. So there's lots of different brand names out there that you will have seen. They all essentially do the same thing, which is using radio frequency energy to go through the skin. Now, one of the problems with delivering energy directly through the surface of the skin is that the surface of the skin is going to start blistering when you get to about 45 degrees or above. Okay, so 45 is the sort of cut off. If you raise the surface of the skin beyond that, you're going to start getting burns and blisters. To get effective collagen contraction under the skin, you need to get the deeper layers of the skin heated up to between 60 and 70 degrees. So you start to see where the limitations in the traditional radio frequency devices come from. You just cannot really get the deeper layers of the skin as hot as you need it to be to get a really effective contraction. The next sort of big change in non-surgical skin tightening came with the launch of ultrasound. Ultrasound is another way that we can deliver energy below the skin. It is actually used for treating kidney stones. So if you have a small stone that's stuck in the kidney or one of the ureters, you can blast it with waves of ultrasound. It will break up the stone and it will help it to pass without surgery. So then people start to say, well, hang on a minute, why don't we use that energy and blast it through the surface of the skin to create subcutaneous wounds and therefore your healing response. So the first technology that came around using that concept of ultrasound was a machine called Althera and um, the treatment was referred to as Altherapy. Now that's another one that a lot of people know about, um, a lot of people talk about, you will see it promoted, there's a couple of celebrities that have been paid to endorse the technology, so you see a lot of hype around Altherapy. Now I have to say, when that first came out, I, I, I trialled the machine and 
To be fair to the Othera company, it was very early days for them. So they had literally just launched in the UK. I was one of the first people to try it. And we got the machine in the clinic for a couple of days. And we used it basically on my mum's friends and aunties and all sorts of relatives. And the feedback on Othera was pretty consistent with the initial feedback that a lot of people provided on Thermage. It was painful and not very effective. So I decided not to bring that into the practice um, and that, that just wasn't something that I, that I was, it wasn't, I, I wasn't comfortable enough that the results of that were worth it for our patients. A few years later, um, maybe 2014-ish, I started hearing better things about Althera. You know, they, they told me that they had changed the protocols of how they used it, they were making it less painful, more effective. So I had another uh, go with it and again, still was not that impressed. The most recent time that I tried it was maybe 2019. Again, still not impressed with it. So I have tried, I want to love Othera, I have tried it. I want to be one of these people that believes passionately in it. But whenever I've tried it with my own hands, I just don't see the results to justify it. And it's an expensive treatment. The treatments are around about three or four thousand pounds a pop. And it's, you know, for that kind of price point, I, I just feel you need to be seeing more of a difference than what you could see with Othera. So that, that kind of, that, that, that was Othera for me. Since Othera came on the market, it has piqued a lot of interest in the use of ultrasound to tighten skin. And you will see now there are lots of other competitors that have launched, most of them manufactured in China, um, as cheaper alternatives to Othera. They call it high intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU for short. So when you see people advertising HIFU, they are generally referring to a cheaper version of Althea. The way that I look at HIFU is if I cannot get the market leader technology with the Althea system to give me results that I'm happy with, what are the chances of the cheaper model from China being able to do any better? So I haven't got involved in HIFU either. I think if I was going to go down the ultrasound route, it would definitely be Althea. They are the market leader. They do have the best technology. I just don't personally feel that I see good enough results with it. So that's that. That's my take on ultrasound. Let's go back now to talk more again about the first lot of technologies, which were the radio frequency technologies. Maybe four or five years ago, some very clever doctors um, came up with the concept of, okay, well, hang on. We need to get the deeper layers of the skin warmer than we can do by going through the surface of the skin. Why don't we put some needles under the skin and deliver the radio frequency energy directly to the place where you need the energy to be, i.e. below the skin? Then was born the concept of radio frequency microneedling. And again, the first machine that came around was Ultracell. Lots of you will have heard about that, seen it, read about it. I got particularly excited by one version of that called Profound from a big American company called Cineron, Cineron Candela. I was the first person in the UK to, 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 get that, to get that machine. There were lots of really amazing scientific studies behind Profound. And so I, I, I put my name in the waiting list for it to buy it before it was even launched in the country. So I was literally the first person to get that system in the UK. And it, it, it definitely worked. The radio frequency microneedling concept is the thing that is delivering the best results right now. But what I found with Profound was that the results were a little bit, they were still quite modest. I, you know, most of my patients want to see more dramatic improvement than what we were achieving with that. You could repeat the treatment and do a course of treatments, but when you're talking about a few thousand pounds per session on Profound, not many people are going to spend £12,000 in the course of Profound for relatively modest results. So, kind of has it taken off as well as I would have liked it to have taken off. Now, more recently, um, we have a new device called Morpheus 8, um, which is having a little bit of a moment right now. And some of you will have seen it in the press, there's quite a few celebrities coming out and endorsing it. It launched towards the end of 2019. We got it beginning of 2020s, so literally, just as the pandemic was about to hit, we, we, we got it just before. So I, we've been using it for over a year now. It is definitely the best of the non-surgical skin tightening devices that I have come across. What I like about Morpheus is that it, it essentially does the same thing as Profound in terms of heating the lower layers of the skin 
but you've got a little bit more control with the Morpheus system over the depth of penetration. So when you apply the needles on the profound system, they go to four millimeters and that's it. So you, you can only really burn one, one particular level of the, of the skin, whereas with the Morpheus, you can adjust the depth of the penetration. So you can go over it at four millimeters, you can then go back over the same area again at three millimeters, and then at two millimeters, and then at one millimeter. So you can get a layered effect, which I think does improve the results. So that's one of the big pluses for Morpheus. The negative with Morpheus is that you don't have quite as much control over the precise temperature that you're heating the skin to. I, I think it's worth losing that little bit of functionality for the, for the gain that you get in having more control over the depth and being able to layer different depths in the skin. So that's, 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 a, that's a big plus for Morpheus. The other thing about the Morpheus is that the price point on it is a little bit lower. So instead of it being seen as a one-off treatment, it is usually a course of treatment. And I really think that having the course of treatment does um, help to produce better results. So that's kind of where we are right now with non-surgical skin tightening. Now, Couple of health warnings I want to give you with this. This technology is good, but people are still having facelifts. And the reason that people are still having facelifts is because a surgical facelift will still be better. Now, if you are at the stage where you kind of don't think that, you've, that you want a facelift, or you are at the stage where you kind of think maybe at some point in the next few years you might want a facelift, but you're kind of not there yet, or if you are the type of person who is just, you know what, I am never, ever, ever going to have a surgeon cut my face, therefore there is no option of having a facelift then 100 percent this is really good option for you but if you were going to compare it like for like with a surgical facelift the surgical facelift is always going to win yes it works yes it delivers visible results is it as good as a facelift no it's not um can we make the results better yes i think we can the way that i think we can make the results better is by combining the treatment with other modalities of treatment so if you imagine the skin, when, when we're tightening it with these devices, um, the skin is only one layer of the face. It's an important layer, it's right at the surface, but you've also got fat, muscle, and bone, and all of those things are changing as well. So if you're gonna do more face, you kinda need to do something about the volume loss and the fat. You usually need to do something about relaxing the overexpressive muscles, and often we need to correct bone resorption as well, also using fillers. So great treatment, but use it in combination with other treatments for a, a, a collective effect. And it's good, but it's not quite a surgical good just yet. So that's kind of where we are with non-surgical skin tightening right now. I think it's good. I think it's, I think the, I think it's only going to get better from here, but it's, it's, it's still got a way to go. The things that I would like to see from the Morpheus, so in mode if you are watching this video, the thing that I would like to see from Morpheus next is more control over the precise temperature that you're taking the, the, the deeper tissues to. I think that's probably the next step that the technology needs to go to. Hope that was informative for you. If you don't follow the page, please click follow or like underneath and tag any friends that you think might be interested.